Chapter Twenty Two of Fame and Fortune. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Barry Eads. Fame and Fortune, or the Progress of Richard Hunter by Horatio Alger. Chapter Twenty Two. Mickey Maguire returns from the island. For three months, Mickey Maguire was not seen in his accustomed haunts. During his involuntary residence at the island, he often brooded over the treachery of Gilbert, to whom his present misfortune was due. He felt that he had been selfishly left to his fate by his equally guilty confederate. It had certainly been a losing speculation for poor Mickey. He had received but a paltry dollar for his services, and in return he was deprived of his liberty for three months. The disgrace of being sent to the island, Mickey did not feel as Dick would have done. He had been there too many times to care for that, but he did not like the restraints of the place, and he did like the free and independent life of the streets, from which for a time he was debarred. The result of Mickey's brooding was a strong thirst for vengeance upon the author of his misfortunes. He could do nothing at present, but only bide his time. Meanwhile things went on pretty much as usual at the establishment in Pearl Street. Gilbert liked Dick no better than he had done. In fact, he disliked him more, but seeing the friendly relations between Dick and his employer, found it prudent to treat him well whenever Mr. Rockwell was by. At other times he indulged in sneers and fault-finding, which Dick turned off good-humouredly, or returned some droll answer which blunted the edge of the sarcasm, and made the bookkeeper chafe with the feeling that he was no match for the boy he hated. Dick, by faithful attention to his duties, and a ready comprehension of what was required of him, steadily advanced in the good opinion of every one except Gilbert. "'Keep on as you have begun, Richard,' said Mr. Murdoch to him, "'and you'll be a member of the firm some time.' "'Do you really think so, Mr. Murdoch?' asked Dick, with a flush of gratification. "'I really do. You have excellent abilities. Mr. Rockwell likes you, and you have only to continue steady and faithful, and you'll be sure to rise.' "'You know what I was, Mr. Murdoch.' "'You are none the worse for that, Richard. "'It is a great credit to a boy to earn his own living "'when circumstances force it upon him. "'If his employment is an honest one, it is an honorable one.' "'By such remarks as these Dick was encouraged, "'and he felt that Mr. Murdoch was a true friend to him. "'Meanwhile a way was opening for his advancement. "'One day Mickey Maguire appeared in his old haunts. "'The second day he met Gilbert in the street.' but the bookkeeper took not the slightest notice of him. That touched Mickey's pride, and confirmed him in his resolution. He decided to make known to Mr. Rockwell Gilbert's share in the little plot, thinking that this would probably be the best method of injuring him. He ascertained, by means of a directory, with some difficulty, for Mickey's education was rather slight, the residence of Mr. Rockwell, and about eight o'clock in the evening ascended the steps and rang the bell. He might have gone to his place of business, but Gilbert would be there, and he preferred to see Mr. Rockwell at home. The servant stared at the odd and not particularly prepossessing figure before her. "'Is Mr. Rockwell at home?' asked Mickey. "'Yes. I want to see him. Did he tell you to call?' "'It's on particular business,' said Mickey. "'Stop here, and I'll tell him,' said the girl. "'There's a boy at the door wants to see you, Mr. Rockwell,' said the girl. "'Did you ask him in?' "'No, sir.' "'He looks like a suspicious character,' said Bridget, laying the stress on the second syllable. Mr. Rockwell rose and went to the door. "'What is your business?' he asked. "'It's about Dick. Ragged Dick, we used to call him,' said Mickey. "'You mean Richard Hunter?' "'Yes,' said Mickey. "'He was took up for stealing a gentleman's pocketbook three months ago.' "'But he was proved innocent,' said Mr. Rockwell. "'So if you have anything to say against him, your time is thrown away.' "'I know he was innocent,' said Mickey. "'Another boy took it.' Who was he? I did it. Then you did a wicked thing in stealing the money, and a mean thing in trying to get an innocent boy into trouble. I wouldn't have done it, said Mickey, if I hadn't been paid for it. Paid for stealing? said Mr. Rockwell, astonished. Paid for trying to get Dick into trouble. That does not seem to be a very likely story, said Mr. Rockwell. Who would pay you money for doing such a thing? Mr. Gilbert. My bookkeeper? Yes, said Mickey, vindictively. I can hardly believe this, said Mr. Rockwell. He paid me only a dollar for what I did, said Mickey, in an injured tone. He ought to have given me five dollars. He's a regular mean feller. And is this why you betray him now? No, said Mickey. It isn't the money. 
though it's mean to expect a feller to run the risk of being nabbed for a dollar. But when the cop got hold of me, I met him, and he said I was a young scamp, and he didn't know anything about me. Is this true? asked Mr. Rockwell, looking keenly at Mickey. Mickey confirmed his statement by an oath. I don't want to hear you swear. I shall not believe you the sooner for that. Can you explain why Mr. Gilbert should engage in such a base conspiracy? He told me that he hated Dick, said Mickey. Do you like him? No, I don't, said Mickey honestly. But I hate Mr. Gilbert worse. Why do you hate Richard? Because he puts on airs. I suppose, said Mr. Rockwell, smiling, that means that he wears good clothes and keeps his face and hands clean. He wasn't nothing but a boot black, said Mickey in an injured tone. What are you? I'm a boot black too, but I don't put on airs. Do you mean to be a boot black all your life? I don't know, said Mickey. There ain't anything else to do. Tell me truly, wouldn't you rather wear good clothes than poor ones and keep yourself clean and neat? Yes, I should, said Mickey after a slight hesitation. Then why do you blame Dick for preferring to do the same? He licked me once, said Mickey rather reluctantly, shifting his ground. What for? I fired a stone at him. You can't blame him much for that, can you? No, said Mickey slowly. I don't know as I can. For my own part, I have a very good opinion of Richard, said Mr. Rockwell. He wants to raise himself in the world, and I am glad to help him. If that is putting on airs, I should be glad to see you doing the same. There ain't no chance for me, said Mickey. Why not? I ain't lucky as Dick is. Dick may have been lucky, said Mr. Rockwell, but I generally find that luck comes oftenest to those who deserve it. If you will try to raise yourself, I will help you. Will you? asked Mickey in surprise. The fact was, he had been an Ishmaelite from his earliest years, and while he had been surrounded by fellows like Limpy Jim, who were ready to encourage and abet him in schemes of mischief, he had never had any friends who deserved the name. That a gentleman like Mr. Rockwell should voluntarily offer to assist him was indeed surprising. How old are you? asked Mr. Rockwell. Seventeen, said Mickey. How long have you black boots? Ever since I was eight or nine. I think it is time for you to do something else. What will I do? We must think of that. I must also think of the information you have given me in regard to Mr. Gilbert. You are certain you are telling the truth. Yes, said Mickey. It's the truth. Mickey did not swear this time, and Mr. Rockwell believed him. Let me see, he said, reflecting. Can you be at my store tomorrow morning at ten o'clock? I can, said Mickey promptly. What is your name? Mickey McGuire. Good night, Michael. Good night, sir, said Mickey respectfully. He walked away with a crowd of new thoughts and new aspirations kindling in his breast. A gentleman had actually offered to help him on in the world. Nobody had ever taken any interest in him before. Life to him had been a struggle and a conflict, with very little hope of better things. He had supposed he should leave off blackening boots some time, but no prospect seemed open before him. Why shouldn't I get up in the world, he thought, with new ambition. He half confessed to himself that he had led a bad life, and vague thoughts of amendment came to him. Somebody was going to take an interest in him. That was the secret of his better thoughts and purposes. On the whole, I begin to think there is hope for Mickey. End of chapter 22